So today in this video, I'm going to show you guys three different ways to connect a compressor to a mixer that doesn't have send and return or an insert jack. True Sound Studios is in your ears. Hey guys, what is up? I'm Wiesna, and as always, we're here at my studio, True Sound Studios. And today I found three different ways of how to hook your compressor up to your mixer that doesn't have those send and return jacks or an insert jack. So with some of these setups, you are gonna need a little bit extra gear, potentially a mic preamp, but I did come up with three really good ways of how to do this. So hopefully one of them will work out for you. Now, just a quick note, um, I did use some like really small little jumper cables to hook everything up in this video. Um, those cables are not balanced. Um, I would definitely recommend using balance cables. So balance quarter inch cables, also known as TRS cables. And the only reason I used these short little cables was just to show you guys a little easier, just to make it visually easier to see how everything was connected. Okay, so let's get into this video. Okay, so here we go. This is going to be option one. And in option one, we are going to use an external mic preamp. So we're gonna use a totally separate mic preamp. So this is how the connection would go. We would plug our microphone into the microphone input on the mic preamp. Then we would run the output of the mic preamp to the input of our compressor. Then we would run the compressor output to the line input on the mixer. So from here, you can adjust the gain on the mixer to get an appropriate level into the mixer. And then from here, you can use any other setting that is on that particular mixer channel that you connected this to. So obviously the negative with this setup is you have to have an external mic preamp. Now, if you don't have an external mic preamp, maybe you have an extra interface, an extra audio interface. So what you can actually do is use that extra audio interface as a mic preamp, obviously as long as it has a mic preamp built into the interface. So using this Personas audio box USB, what I can do is use a USB power supply from my tablet and I can use a USB cable to run and actually power this audio interface. So this USB cable is not going to connect to our computer. It is simply going to connect to the power supply, the tablet power supply, and I'm gonna plug the other end of the cable into the back of the Persona's audio box. Then from here, we can just use it like a normal mic preamp, and I can very simply go ahead and use the phantom power, turn up the gain on the mic preamp, and on this particular interface, I have to set the mixer setting to input, and then I simply use the main output knob to adjust the amount of signal that I send to the compressor. So from here, it is the exact same setup. We plug the microphone into the input of our interface or our mic preamp, and then the output of the audio interface then runs to the input of the compressor, and then the output of the compressor runs into the line input of our mixer. Okay, so now let's take a look at option two. So with option two, we are going to use two channels on our mixer. So one channel is going to be our mic preamp, and then we're actually going to send that signal through an aux or an aux send into our compressor and then back into a second channel. This is how it is connected. So on channel one of our mixer, we're gonna plug our microphone into the mic input. Then we can go ahead and turn up the gain on channel one till we get at an appropriate level and then make sure it's not clipping. So this option will only work if your mixer has an aux send. Now in this particular mixer, we have an aux one and an aux two. But if we look carefully, we can see that aux one is pre-fader. Now pre-fader means that we can turn down the actual overall output volume of the channel and still send a signal through aux one. So aux two is post fader, meaning we have to actually have the channel fader up in order to send signal through aux two. Now in this particular situation, 
Channel one, we actually need to have our volume for that channel all the way to zero. And instead, we are going to send signal through the aux one. So with that being said, we can only use an aux that is pre-fader. So we are gonna use aux one. So now we can go ahead and turn our aux knob all the way over to aux one. So now our microphone signal from channel one on our mixer is gonna be coming out of the aux one send here on the mixer. So now I can plug a cable into the aux one send and plug the other end into the input of our compressor. And then a second cable will run from the output of the compressor and run into the line input on channel two of our mixer. So now we can turn up the gain on channel two to get an appropriate level into the mixer. And from here, we can go ahead and at the very bottom, we can now turn up our channel level fader or our channel level knob in this case. And this is how much signal now can be heard through our mixer. So obviously the negative of this setup is for one microphone, you do have to use two channels on your mixer, but if you're only recording one signal at a time, this really shouldn't be an issue. So finally, we get to setup number three, and in my opinion, this is probably the easiest way to connect your compressor to your mixer. So in the case that you're gonna connect this mixer and compressor to an interface, this is how you can set it up. Now, if you have a two channel compressor like this DBX 266 XL compressor, you can connect the left main output of your mixer into the input on channel one on your compressor. Then the right main output on your mixer would run into channel two input on your compressor. Then the output of channel one on your compressor then would run to the input on channel one of your audio interface. Then channel two output on your compressor would run into the input on channel two on your audio interface. So with this setup, unfortunately, you don't have control of the compression on each one of the channels. So I would definitely recommend that you only use this setup if you're going to record one instrument at a time, for example, just a vocal or just a guitar. This way you have the most control over what this compressor is going to do. So if you guys are using this setup, setup number three to run to a PA system. So you're going from the mixer to the compressor to the PA system, just know that when you go ahead and turn up any level on the mixer, you're gonna be sending more signal to the compressor, which is obviously going to just give you that more compressed sound. So you just wanna really make sure that you watch the compressor um, as you start turning things up. So if you did wanna increase the overall volume coming out of the mixer and out of the compressor, you definitely want to use the output gain or the makeup gain on the compressor to send more volume to the PA system. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you can use one of these three methods to hook up your compressor to your mixer and either have a better sounding recording or a better sounding PA system. So if you guys are looking for more material on recording, mixing, mastering, or producing, go ahead and check out the over 140 videos currently on the True Sound Studios YouTube channel. So thank you for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, click that like button and consider subscribing for more content. So not only do I make YouTube videos, but I also produce tracks and I can mix and master your music. So once again, thank you for watching this video. I'm Wiesna and True Sound Studios is in your ears.